Let's talk about self-amusement. When you're out meeting people, do you find yourself sort of walking this tightrope where you're measuring your words very carefully and trying to impress the people? You're trying to you know, say things that you know, are going to pander to what you think that they might like so they think that you're cool. Do you find yourself doing that? Or are you able to stay genuine, stay authentic, and stay true to yourself? Obviously, the latter is going to be better. And it all ties back to this concept of self-amusement. Now, self-amusement, this is an idea that's been kicking around the, the community for literally decades now. And it's very, very often misunderstood. People think that you're sort of this cl dancing clown that's jumping around and making people giggle with your wild behaviors. It's not about being the loudest or the most outrageous person in the room. It's just about being comfortable in your own skin and enjoying yourself in the environment. And then most importantly, not looking to other people for validation to make your night better. The key here is to shift from trying to impress other people to simply expressing yourself. I've been running live in-field social skills boot camps for 21 years now. And back in the day, the focus of a program like that might have been more on using pre-planned lines or routines to elicit a positive response from the people that you went up to. Right? I say this funny stuff and they think I'm cool and they laugh and then it, 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 it works. Well, we have long since moved far, far beyond that approach. These days, it's about just being in a positive state of mind, enjoying your own presence first, and then sharing that energy with other people, right? It's not about this competitive energy where you're like trying to get in, trying to get into their group. And if it doesn't work out, you're a fucking loser that sucks and your night goes down the drain, right? That approach, going in with that mindset, that competitive energy, oddly enough, that, that tends to get a bad reaction. So it's really more about enjoying yourself first in the environment than putting yourself into that middle space, so to speak, between you and the person you're trying to meet, and then inviting them to join you in the middle and collaborate in creating something new together. And this tends to get a much better response. Why? Because it's non-needy. When you go out, I want you to look at all of your interactions through this lens, right? Number one, are you seeing people having fun and then you're sort of trying to weasel your way into their party? Or are you already having fun and then you just go up and add that to their experience? Are you adding positive energy to the interaction or are you looking to leech energy from others? Are you like, give me good energy so my night can be better? Me, give it to me, give it to me. Or are you adding? Anytime that you're asking them to give you energy, that's likely to be poorly received. So enjoying yourself in the environment first before you go up and introduce yourself. This is an absolute requirement for success here. If you can't do that, you're going to have a real hard time getting past that social hook point. And if you don't know what the social hook point is, that's simply the point where they go from thinking, who is this person and why are they speaking to me? To, oh, okay, this person's cool. Let's keep talking to them. And that could happen instantaneously or it could take up to a couple of minutes. But again, you've got to get past that point. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but again, to get past that point, it's an absolute requirement that before you approach, you'll be enjoying yourself and giving off good energy. People tend to be drawn to those who add value, who add a certain vibrancy to their experience, not those who are coming up and diminishing it, not people who are coming up anxious, hoping it works, asking for validation, et cetera, et cetera. Look, if we're talking about a nightlife environment, say on Friday night, those people out there, they're trying to unwind from their stressful work week. And anything that does not contribute to that outcome will will be summarily dismissed. You know, if you go up and again, your anxiety, trepidation, hope it works, please give me love, please give me energy. There's gonna be like, dude, no. I mean, again, they might politely talk to you for a couple of minutes, but they're gonna, they're gonna excuse themselves rather swiftly. So when you're engaging with other people, you want the focus to be on being genuinely interested and interesting. And the goal here, it's not just to make a good impression on the people that you meet, but it's to create actual genuine connections and enjoy your interactions regardless of the outcome. You know, that idea of the joy of taking action. And this mindset, if you adopt that, it's not only going to make your experiences more fulfilling, but it's actually going to resonate more authentically with the people you meet. There is a power in authenticity. I really want to stress that. The paramount importance of authenticity over, you know, trying to impress other people with your clever lines and shit. Look, I, I got clever lines up the ass all day long. I got bon mots, witticisms, et cetera, et cetera. 
But personally, I've shifted my focus from trying to impress other people with my like dazzling witticisms to just being myself, enjoying my own style of humor, my own style of interacting. I'm not out there trying to find like 10 people that think I'm sort of okay. Like, oh, this person, he seems harmless. He's, he's fine. This guy's fine. It's like, no, I want to find people who think I'm hilarious and awesome. And one person in there is going to going to think that, you know, statistically speaking, at least in my experience, you know, if I got to talk to 20 people before I find that person, that's absolutely fine. I can do that. No skin off my back. Most of the time, I don't have to talk to 20 people. I've talked to like three or four because interestingly enough, when you stop going up with that needy energy, that competitive energy, and you start going up with that collaborative contributing energy where you're already enjoying yourself and you're sharing it. Interestingly enough, paradoxically, the less you care, the more people you find you have chemistry with, right? They're like, wow, this person's really free in, in uh, ways perhaps that I'm not, or maybe they're, they're that free as well. And they're like, okay, game recognized game, a kindred spirit. Hence a big part of the fun of the night for us is actually going through and doing our approaches and actually finding those people that we actually have chemistry with. When you do find that person and it's coming from that place of authenticity, that place of genuine connection, that place of self-amusement. When you do that, the attraction is going to be a hundred times more powerful than if you were using these little lines and gambits, routines, stratagems, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, all this stuff that's not necessarily congruent with you to try to manage, micromanage their perceptions of you. So number one, it's going to be a lot more fun for you. And number two, the interest that you generate is going to be a lot more powerful and real and it's quite frankly, it's going to result in actually closing the deal as opposed to like this giggle, 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 and then they just excuse themselves. It's not about changing who you are to fit someone else's preferences. It's about finding people who appreciate you for who you are. And if somebody doesn't resonate with your style, that's not a failure on your part. Of course, provided you're not making like gross mechanical errors, which you you likely are, but that's a that's a separate topic because you're probably making a lot of like simple mistakes that are, you know, I want to say mechanical errors, things like not smiling enough, things like not standing dead ass in front, approaching abruptly. You know, you're probably doing a lot of things like that that you're not even aware of, which again, I think one of the biggest benefits of coming on a live program is letting me see what the hell you're doing. Like letting somebody who's highly, highly experienced at this stuff, see what you're doing and describe to you the errors you're making from a third person perspective at which point you have that awareness and now you can start to correct those things. But again, provided you're not making like gross mechanical errors, if somebody doesn't, you know, respond well to your to your style, that is not a failure on your part. In this context, what might be traditionally seen as a rejection is better understood as a lack of chemistry. And this shift in perspective is absolutely vital if you want to have longevity in this, because otherwise you're just going to get disheartened and you're going to quit before you can even acquire the skill set. So again, it's not about every single interaction leading to a successful outcome in the conventional sense. It's about finding those people that you naturally connect with and share a mutual interest. That's what self-amusement is really all about. Hope that this quick little video cleared up some misconceptions you might have had about that concept of self-amusement. Again, if you're curious about coming on one of these live programs I just talked about, you can check out the links for those in the description below. I'd love to have you on there. It'd be my honor and privilege to be a part of your journey at becoming a real motherfucking G. This has been Jeffy, and I'll see you next time. One of the first takeaways from Charisma Mastery, awareness, understanding that our ability to be charismatic, to communicate to others, to convey the optimism and potential that is all around us in the world starts with being aware of your body and your mind. I can become more authentic, in my writings, in video creation, or just in physical interactions, professionally, socially, uh, help me with my dating options, um, help me restore relationships with my families, and help me to just get past this superficial stage. I can take off this armor and, and truly, truly be more, be more authentic and be more true to myself. Jeff, thank you for putting together this course. Um, it was very well structured. And I really admire uh, the professionalism within the course and, and just how, how well uh, put together all the modules were. I, I really admire the, um, the detail and the depth that, that you put into this and how much value you delivered. So thank you so much for that. Yeah.